Hi, I'm Mike Seaman for Ada One Power. Today we'll measure the loop gain of a power converter using the Analog Discovery 2. The Analog Discovery 2 is a $280, 100 mega sample per second data acquisition system. When coupled with the waveform software, it can implement an oscilloscope, function generator, spectrum and network analyzer, and a few more functions in one unit. It can be used effectively um, as a way of measuring the loop gain without having to buy a multi-thousand dollar instrument. But let's first take a look at what loop gain means for power converters. This is a diagram for a typical feedback system. The plant is a system we like to control. We provide a compensator block which takes an error signal and produces a control signal to the plant. The error signal is a difference between our reference or command signal and the, the output pr processed by a feedback network. To determine the stability of this feedback system, it is useful to examine the loop gain over frequency. The loop gain is the product of the gains of these three blocks. So here is a uh, typical closed loop power supply. The power conversion stage is our plant, controlled by a duty cycle and producing an output voltage. The PWM controller is our compensator here, comparing the difference between a reference voltage and the output voltage divided down by a feedback network. The loop gain for this system is typically shown on a Bode plot. The crossover frequency is where the loop gain magnitude is unity, or 0 dB. The difference between the phase and minus 180 degrees re represents the phase margin of our system, in this case 54 degrees. The gain margin of the system is the gain when the phase crosses minus 180 degrees. In this case, it's 18 dB. The crossover frequency of our system represents its bandwidth, and the phase and gain margin represents its stability. Because both are positive by a reasonable margin, our converter is stable. To measure the loop gain, we need to inject a test signal into our power converter. We first insert a small resistor in series with the feedback network. Since this resistor is much smaller than those in the feedback network, it will not significantly change the operation of the circuit. We then use an isolation transformer to inject the test signal from the arbitrary waveform generator into the circuit. We then want to measure the signal at the input to the feedback network and also the resulting signal at the output of the, the power converter. We do this by connecting channel one of our oscilloscope between the feedback side of our resistor and ground. We then connect channel two between the output of the converter and ground. It is now time to power up the converter and take our measurement, but first let's take a look at our experimental setup. Here's our test setup. We are using the TPS 40170 EVM from Texas Instruments. It already has a resistor inserted to measure loop, the loop gain, which is connected between these test points. I've soldered headers to these test points to connect the analog discovery to and the injection transformer. I'm using this AC transformer as the injection transformer. When choosing a transformer, you'll want something that will not saturate at low frequencies and will stay reasonably flat up to your maximum frequency. This transformer is a bit too big. It starts having issues above 100 kilohertz, as we'll see later. I've connected the waveform output of the AD2 to the primary side of the transformer. The secondary side of the transformer is connected to the inserted resistor here. The channel 1 oscilloscope input um, in orange is connected to the feedback side of that inserted resistor and to ground. Channel 2 in blue is connected between the output voltage side of that inserted resistor and ground as well. Uh, we finally connected um, the ground to the circuit ground um, as well. To test the loop gain, the converter needs to operate at the desired point. We'll first set the desired input voltage, in this case to 30 volts. We'll then set the load to 5 amps. You'll want to repeat this test across line voltage and low current to ensure that your converter is stable at all points. Now that the power converter is running at the desired input voltage and output current, we'll open up the waveform software. For this task, we'll use the network analyzer function. We'll start by configuring the network analyzer. We'll start at a frequency of 100 Hz and go to a megahertz. We'll also increase the number of samples taken. We'll then configure the waveform amplitude. 
This will depend on the, the transformer you use. So start with a low value and then work your way up until the loop response looks clean. If you choose too high of a value, you may upset the dynamics of the power converter. You'll see that channel 1 is used as our reference, which means that uh, channel 2, which is measuring the output of the converter, uh, will be taken with respect to channel 1 and will represent our loop gain. We'll then increase the settling time and number of uh, periods sampled in order to smooth out the waveform. Finally, we'll set our magnitude range from 50 dB to minus 50 dB. So now we can click the single button to acquire um, the loop gain of the converter. So this will take a few minutes because we've increased our, our sample period. So the loop gain in blue here is roughly what we expect to see from our calculation. We can take a look at our crossover frequency, and that's about 35.7 kilohertz. And our phase margin at this point is 57 degrees. So that indicates a very stable converter. Uh, next, we can take a look at when the phase crosses zero degrees, and we see that our gain margin is minus 14.4 dB. So you, no you notice that above 150 kilohertz, um, the, the gain and the phase become a lot more noisy. That's because at these frequencies, um, the transformer is um, less ideal and starts to have its own dynamics. Um, it's also above half the switching frequency, so you'll see a lot of um, switching noise come into that measurement as well. We've seen that we can easily obtain the loop gain for a power converter using the inexpensive Analog Discovery 2 data acquisition system. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and please check us out at adadesigner.com.